Stanford University. Welcome to Stanford CS 193P, Developing Applications for iOS, winter of 2017. This is lecture number 12, and today our topic is going to be auto layout. Okay, I'm going to review a little bit of what we already know about uh, auto layout and then move on to a very important part of auto, auto layout called size classes. And we'll demo everything as usual. So what have you seen in auto layout already? Well, you know about the dashed blue lines, right? When you drag things out, and move them around, and you make those dashed blue lines appear, you know that it helps Xcode when you want to do reset to suggested constraints. And you know that also sometimes reset to suggested constraints doesn't really do what you want, OK? Um, it really only works if those blue lines are just unambiguously, obviously, that's what you wanted, all right? But uh, you also know that after you do something, especially after you do reset to suggested constraints, you can go over to the size inspector, uh, click on any of the views in your, uh, in your UI, and you can look at the constraints. And it shows you them, and you can even kind of hover over them with the mouse, and it will show them uh, on the screen, highlight them, etc. So that's a good tool to know what's going on. You also know that you can click on the constraint itself, right? The little eye beams or whatever, you can click on them and bring up the inspector on them, and you can see a lot of detail uh, about them. Uh, you know what the constants are, what's on either end of them. Uh, in other words, what the constraint, the two things being involved in constraint are. So you already know that as well. Uh, you also know about control dragging uh, to edges, right? We did a lot of control dragging to the edge to make our UI kind of use up all the space. But you also saw a little bit of a hint in the smash tag demo that you can actually control drag between any two views, okay? This is the key thing about auto layout. It sets constraints really between any two views. There's no, almost no restriction between the things you can set constraints uh, against. And we'll see that in the demo a little bit today. Now, in addition to control dragging to set up these constraints between things, you can also select them. I select one view or select a couple of views. And there's a couple of little menus in the corner down there, the pin menu or the align menu, and then this other kind of generic menu that has a lot of random uh, things you can set constraints for. And we'll use that today as well so you can see that different way of doing it. Pretty much everything in there you can do with control drag, but sometimes it's hard to do control drag. Maybe the views are very close together, or they're really near the edge, or they're overlapping some other view. And so when that starts to be a problem, you can click on them to select, either using the control shift click to drill down if things are overlapping, or maybe use the document outline to select it, and then go to these menus to apply whatever constraints that you want. Okay, now the document outline we showed briefly, and I'll show it again today, is really the go-to place to resolve problems with constraints. Both complaint, constraints that are insufficient, in other words, you haven't put enough constraints on a view for the Xcode or iOS to know where the thing goes, or constraints that conflict. Maybe you put two constraints on views that it's like they're pulling against each other and iOS doesn't know what to do. So the document outline is the place that we go to resolve all that stuff, and we'll see that in the demo today. Now, one thing to understand about auto layout is it takes experience to master it. There's a lot of degrees of freedom there with those constraints in terms of how you can constrain views relative to each other, and it, there's, it's just no substitute for experience. You just have to do it. So. Don't expect that after you see the demo today and after what you've seen earlier in the course, like, oh, now I'm an auto layout master, uh, you will have to be designing a lot of user interfaces, lining up a lot of edges, making things the same widths, those kinds of things, until you learn kind of the tools enough to be a good uh, auto layout master. But once you master it, it can be really, really super powerful, as you can see. So auto layout is also doable from code. In other words, there's a class, NS layout constraint, and it has all the functionality that is in the storyboard. We rarely use it because we can do pretty much everything from the storyboard. But, uh, and I'm not gonna have time to teach it. Obviously, I have to be selective about what I can uh, show you in this limited time available. But you can do some pretty tricky things in code that you can't do in storyboard, but they're, they're pretty, I don't want to say advanced, but they're, let's say, fairly obscure. And uh, 
So if you're interested in pursuing that, maybe for your final project or something, you can just start with NS layout constraint in the documentation and kind of go from there. All right. It's not a slide here. Um, let's talk a little bit about rotation, auto rotation. We know that when we rotate, that's one of the biggest times that auto layout has to kick in and figure out where things go because things have dramatically changed, right? They're much wider than they are tall now or vice versa. And sometimes, unfortunately, that rotation causes such a dramatic change in your UI that you want to actually move views around in a way that you just can't say by align these edges, make these the same width, uh, keep this separation, those kind of things. You actually want to pick them up and move them. And actually a great example of that is our calculator. Okay, Our calculator, at least not your calculator, but the calculator we last saw in demo had 20 buttons. All right, And we had it as four across and five down. And that made a lot of sense because in portrait mode, we had a lot of vertical space and not a whole lot of horizontal space, so we kind of went for the, the uh, five high and four, four wide. But then when we switched to landscape, oh, now it's not so good because all the buttons are squished down. They're really wide and thin. It would be much better if when we went to landscape, we could go to five across and four down, okay, because we have a lot less space. Now, can you imagine trying to do a, a control drag to make that happen? It's basically impossible. It can't be done. But it's possible to do with a very important uh, feature, which I'm going to talk about in a moment here. Now, uh, this kind of rotation stuff is n or the problem where your view changes from landscape to portrait and you want to move all the views around can happen in other situations too. Imagine that you have an MVC that wants to look good in landscape, but also wants to look good when it's the master of a split view controller. Okay, the master of a split view controller kind of looks like it's in portrait. So even though you're on an iPad, let's say, sometimes you have tall and skinny uh, just like you have on an iPhone. So it's not just uh, iPhone issue only, rotation issue only. So the solution to all this is called size classes. Now, Apple has chosen to take an approach to dealing with this, with this, which is fairly simple, which is a pretty good idea because you could imagine a very complicated solution that tries to basically take into effect every possible geometry and every size. You can end up writing a lot of code or a massive number of auto layout constraints to make it work. So they've boiled it down to this very simple system where they talk about size classes and a view or a view controller at any given time exists with a certain size class, both in the horizontal direction and the vertical direction. And the only two values that the size class can have is compact or regular. So regular is regular sized, and compact means that you're constrained in that direction. So we'll, let's look at all our devices and see when they're constrained in either compact or uh, in either height or width, and when they're just regular. So let's talk about the iPhone first. The iPhone in portrait is regular in height, plenty of height, right? But it's compact in width. It's kind of constrained in width in that circumstance. When you switch to landscape, maybe surprisingly, iPhones are compact in both directions. Because even though when you go to landscape, it gets quite a bit wider, it's still not that wide. Okay, It's not wide like an iPad. Uh, so it's still somewhat constrained. So they decided to make uh, landscape iPhone be compact in both directions. So in portrait, it's regular in height and compact in width. But in landscape, it's compact in both directions. A little counterintuitive, but you'll see it works out quite nicely. Now, the iPhone Pluses, the 6 Plus and the 7 Plus, those are a little different. They're still compact in width and regular in height in portrait, but when you go to landscape, since there's, those iPhone Pluses are so big that they can actually start showing that kind of horizontal UI, uh, just like it was an iPad or something, so they are regular in width in landscape mode. Okay. The iPhone is compact in both. The iPhone Plus is still compact in height in landscape, but it's regular in width. All right. And then the iPad, since it's huge, is always regular in both dimensions. Okay, Both width and height is always regular. But that's only for view controllers that are taking over the whole screen. If you're a view controller, like I said, in the master of a split view, you're 
compact width, regular height. Okay? Or if you're a multitasking MVC that comes out from the right, you all know about multitasking on the iPad, hopefully, you can drag the thing out from the right and pick another app and have two apps running side by side. Well, when you pull that thing out, that's also going to be a compact width, regular height. Okay? Now, this whole mechanism of compact and regular and size classes, uh, of course, it's built in for the devices, as I described above here, but it's also extensible. So if you were to write your own thing where an MVC was embedded inside an M another MVC, you could set or communicate whether that MVC is compact or regular in each of width and height, and kind of send a message to the MVC, hey, I've constrained your height, so make sure you deal with that, or I've constrained your width and uh, so it can react to it. Now again, I'm not going to have time to talk about that uh, in detail, but there is this var called trait collection, uh, which you can look at in a view controller, and it'll tell you what your current size class is, both horizontally and vertically. Okay, and there's a mechanism for passing that along down to sub MVCs and views and things. All right, so we have the size classes, Okay, compact width and regular width, compact height and regular height, which makes for four different combinations right here. And again, compact width and height is iPhones in landscape, but not plus ones. Compact height and regular width is the iPhone plus only in landscape. Regular height and compact width is iPhones in portrait, both pluses and regular, and also like a split view master. And then regular regular is an iPad in portrait or landscape, the whole thing, right? So if we had this normal grid and we wanted our calculator to look good in all of them, conceivably we'd have to write, do four different UIs uh, for our calculator like this, okay? Where I'm making, when I uh, have some more uh, vertical height, I go five high, but when I'm com kind of compacted, I'll go to only four high. So this would be a bit of a pain in the neck, okay? To have to do this. And so to make it a little easier, when we're designing, we also have the concept of any height or any width, all right? Now, if we do that, now we're down to only having to do two things with our calculator, okay? So anytime we have compact height and we don't care what the width is, we're gonna go four high. Anytime we have a regular height and we don't care what the width is, we'll go five high. So that's reduced the amount of work we have to do by half. And actually, we can reduce it even more because we can also design any any. This any, by the way, doesn't mean any like the Swift type any. It just means any width, any height, okay, the English word any. And so we can do our designing, and in fact, our default design in storyboards is to be designing any width, any height. Now, we can build in our calculator the, all the parts that are the same for the five wide case or the four wide case. We can build all that in the any, any mode and then only have to do the stuff that's specific to the size class being different in that case. Okay, so that reduces even more the design we have to do. Because we're doing most of our design in any, any, and then a little bit to make the other two work. So you can see here in the calculator here, the only things I can do in any, any is the base keyboard there, not including the buttons that are either gonna be on the top or on the side, because those, are, those depend on the um, vertical size class there. Uh, and also I can do my display at the top, but that's all I can do. Okay, but that's a lot. It's most of my UI. And we'll see in the demo, I'm going to do exactly this. All right, so let's jump into that. To make the demo a little bit easier to understand what's going on here, we go to the developer, here's our calculator. I actually added a little bit of code to my calculator, and I'll show it to you. So this is the calculator that we left off. The last thing we did in this calculator was the green square root, remember? So it's not changed uh, since then except for this. In the view controller for this guy, I added this blue code right here. Um, I added this function show size classes, which hijacks the display, you know, our blue display on the top. It hijacks it and writes in there what the width and height size classes are of the calculator in the moment. Okay, and then I just 
ha implemented a couple of view controller lifecycle methods here. View did appear calls it, and then view will transition uh, to size, which is what happens when you rotate. And I just call this show size classes there. Um, I also added a little extension to uh, UI user interface size class to just have it implement custom string convertible. So it implements that method description and just returns compact and regular. That's so that I can do this line of code right here where I'm printing out the size classes. Okay, so it's not really important that you understand this. Uh, you'll just notice that when we run it, so I'll go ahead and run here, you're gonna see that that blue thing is gonna get taken over to show you the size class. That's just because when you were running, I want you to be clear on what size classes uh, we're doing both uh, horizontally and vertically. Okay, so when we are in, this is iPhone 7, so we are in this uh, portrait mode, so you can see that our width is compact and our height is regular. If I rotate, so I'm just gonna hit the command key here to rotate, you can see that now we are width compact and height compact, because we're on the iPhone 7. Okay, if we run iPhone 7 Plus, right now it would be width regular height compact. So in the interest of time, I won't run it there, but when we do come to running it, we'll be able to always see what uh, size class we're in. So here is uh, our UI right here, and there's a couple of things we can do with size classes that are actually really, really simple. For example, you can click on certain UI elements, like a label, and when you go to the attributes inspector over here, you'll notice that some of the attributes have these little pluses. You see that plus, plus? Even down here, plus and plus. Okay, and what these pluses let you do is change these fields in that size class. Okay, and we can do the any, any, we can do compact, width, compact, height, any, any combinations we want. So, for example, here, let's go ahead and have our background color of our display up here vary depending on our height size class. Okay, if we're height compact, we'll do one thing. If we're um, height regular, we'll do another. So we do that by pressing this little plus. You see when you do that? And here we can pick the width that we want. And since we're varying on the height, I'm just gonna say any width. And I'm gonna say height compact. So this will means that this background that it's gonna, this variation is gonna create will only take effect when the height is compact. If the height is regular, this is not going to take effect. So I'm gonna add a variation. You see it added it here, you see the little HC, that means height compact, all right? Width is any, so it doesn't say anything about width. And now we can change it, let's pick, this is for height compact, so I'm gonna pick cyan, C for cyan, C for compact, hopefully we can uh, remember that. So I've changed that. Now, when I change this, notice nothing, nothing changed here. Why did nothing change there? Anyone know? Nobody? It's because we are in portrait on an iPhone here, right? iPhone portrait. That is size class height regular. You see, we're down here, it'll always tell you what your size class is of what you're looking at. This is height regular. So since height regular is not height, you know, height compact, we get the default. But if I switch over to here, landscape, I turn cyan because now I'm in landscape mode of an iPhone, which is height compact width compact as well. And if I go to iPhone 7, is it gonna be cyan here? Yes it is, because in iPhone 7 Plus, we're regular width, but we're still compact height. So we're still getting that cyan there, okay? Now we could add another one, for example, right here. We could go add this one and say, what about any width and height is regular? We'll add a variation for that and go up here, maybe we'll pick red for regular, okay? And so now anytime the height is regular, we're gonna see red. So let's go look at portrait, iPhone 7 Plus, that's clearly regular. How about iPad, red is regular. Let's go iPhone, okay, red, regular height. Let's go landscape, er, back to compact, so we get cyan. So you see how I'm just adding these variations and you can do that for lots of different things. For example, when we look at this UI on an iPad, it doesn't look that good because look how tiny all the fonts are here. Maybe we would want to go up here and add a variation when it's regular, regular, 
okay, iPad only, uh, where we cr increase the font of the buttons up to 80 or 90, okay, we could do that. That's not always going to be the best way to do things like vary a font, but it's certainly uh, possible to do that. Okay, understand all that business? So let's talk a little bit of how we are going to make this UI do the five by four or the four by five thing here, okay? And we know that we want to have as much of the UI as we can that's common to both be shared. So what I'm going to do is try to work on that shared part of the UI here. And it doesn't really matter what device I'm looking at while I'm doing this. It could be iPhone Plus, it could be a regular iPhone, it doesn't matter, because I'm editing stuff that applies to all size classes. And I'll show you in a moment how we're going to edit stuff that applies to a specific size class. So how am I going to do this? You saw in the slides that really only this part right here, these bottom 16, uh, are common to all. These four across the top are either across the top or they're off, off to the left in a horizontally compact situation. So I'm going to have to kind of unbundle all these things. So let's start by just selecting this top level stack view and unstack view unstack viewifying it, right? Taking everything out of the stack view because clearly these things can't be inside that stack view. And one thing to understand when you're doing these size classes, you can have views come and go based on size class, but you can't have them come and go inside stack views. Okay, it doesn't know how to put a view in inside another view. It has to be kind of a top level uh, coming and going uh, or inclusion or not include inclusion. So how do we undo a stack view? Actually, you can just go to editor up here, just where the same place we said embed in stack view, you can actually do unembed and that will take everything out of the stack view. Okay, back to where we were before. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the constraints on here because I had these constraints that were holding this to the edge, but they just don't make any sense anymore because I've unbundled this. So how can I do that? Right down here in the lower corner where it says resolve auto, auto layout issues, you can go down here and for all views in the view controller, you can say clear constraints. So that's what I'm going to do and it's going to wipe out all the constraints in this view controller. Okay, clear them all out. So uh, now that I don't have the constraints in here, uh, I can move this stuff around and kind of put new constraints that I want on here. And we can see that our constraints are cleared because if I select something like this top label and I go to size inspector over here, there's no constraint at the bottom. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way. Let's put this back tied to the top and left and right in exactly the same way as we did before. It's a kind of review. I'm just going to control drag to the top. Now actually, I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to control drag kind of up to the corner up here. When I do that, I can actually do both leading and vertical space. And what I'm doing here to make, to pick more than one constraint is shift. So if you do shift, you can pick more than one thing. So here I want both the leading edge on the left there and the top edge, the vertical space, to be tied, okay, to be constrained. So I just pick all the ones I want and then I click add constraints right here and it adds those two. And same thing, I can do this one over here then, that's the trailing one. So now when we look at our label up there, it's got these constraints, that's good, that's what we want. Now. What about this bottom constraint? Well, it used to be that the bottom of this was tied to the top of this, and then the bottom of this was tied to the bottom of this, but we can't do that anymore because in five high by four wide, this is going to be on the top, but in four high and five wide, these are going to be over here, and this is going to be at the top. So that's something we can't do in the any any mode, so we just can't do it. But we can take this stack view here and put it down in this corner over here and use our same control drags to do the trailing space there and the control drag to the bottom to do the vertical space. Okay? Oh, I'm going to mess that up there. Sorry. Um, so, and the uh, trailing space, vertical space at the bottom. Okay, so I've tied this thing to the bottom. So this actually works, in quotes, it works in both modes, okay? Keeps them both on screen, it's doing what I said, keeping the display at the top and keeping this stuff in the lower right, but it's clearly insufficient 
to do what we want in the two different cases. So in the two cases, it's this stack view right here, zoom in a little, this stack view right here is the one that's at issue. So I'm just going to take this thing and lift it up out of the stack view, which you can do. You can lift things up and out. So I lift it out and drop it. And it's sitting there. Now, it doesn't want to be in the any, any case at all. Okay? It wants to only be in certain size classes. So I'm going to take it and cut it because I'm going to paste it back in when we get to uh, other size classes. So this is our any, any right here. This is the best we can do in terms of common UI to both the compact vertical case and the regular vertical case. So now let's go on and do the compact case, let's say. Okay, let's, let's do the UI that's compact. Now, since all the work that we're going to be doing right now is only for the compact case, we need to press this super important button right here, very for trace. This is all the, this is what it's all about when it comes to doing these size class variations. So first you're going to pick something that has the height or width class or both that you want to vary. So here I want to do the horizontal or the height compact. See height compact? I want to do that one. So this is, this is a pretty good one to work in, but I can pick any of the ones that are height compact. And then I'm going to say vary for traits and I'm going to vary in the height direction. Notice that that bar at the bottom turned bright blue. That's to warn you, oh, watch out here now, because you are editing the UI only for height compact. And it's even showing you all devices that are height compact, okay? which is all the iPhones, uh, including the pluses. They're all in landscape. They're all height compact. And those are the only ones. So all the editing we're doing now is only going to have effect on these devices until we stop making this thing blue by pressing done var varying. So building this UI now, we can, here's the two big things you can do when you're in the blue mode here. One is you can add views or remove views actually. And the other is you can add constraints. So that's exactly what we want to do here. We want to put those four buttons over here and then we want to do some constraints to make those buttons be in the right place. So let's start by adding these back. Remember I cut them so I'm just going to paste. Okay, here it is. Here's that stack view that had them. It used to be inside this stack view at the top. Now I want to kind of put it on this side. And when I put it on this side, I want it to like seem like it's inside the stack view, but I can't actually put it inside the stack view because like I said, this variation for trace cannot put things inside stack views, okay? But it's a great opportunity for me to show you other auto layout constraints that can make it seem like it's in that stack view, okay? And basically do the same thing that the stack view is doing internally, which is just adding auto layout constraints to make things work. Now the first thing we want is we want these buttons to be vertical, okay? We want them up and down, and that's simple to do. We have this selected. I'm just going to go to the attributes inspector and change the stack view to be vertical. So it's switching over to vertical. Okay, that's a really good start. I could drag this up next to it and use the blue lines. That's nice, although the blue lines are probably not going to get it right here. Because if you notice when I drop that blue line down, look, it's trying to do all kinds of things, centering here, uh, stuff like that along the bottom. Mm, no, so I'm going to do all of my uh, constraints here to make this hook up. I'm going to do them all manually. Also, it's a good chance to show you how to do them all. So what, how are we going to make this vertical piece right here, this vertical stack view, look like it's a part of this other stack view? Well, one thing we want to do is we clearly want the height of this stack view to always be tracking the height of the other one. Right? We want the top and bottom edges, basically, of this stack view and of this stack view to always be pinned. Well, that sound, pinning sounds like a constraint, right? We want to constrain them. So how can we do that? Here's how we do it. We're going to select them both. Okay? A good way to select things, by the way, is dragging. Okay? Dragging is a great way to select things. So I'm going to select both of them right here. And then I'm going to use this menu down here, okay, which is called the Align menu. And that's what I want to do. I want to align these things. I click on it. And you can see that I can align things like the centers or even the text baselines. But what I want here is I want to align the top and bottom. So I'm going to click top and bottom. This, these numbers over here, by the way, are an offset. So if you wanted it to line the tops, but you want one to be 10 higher, you could put a 10 in here, but I want them to be right along the top. I want to have the constraint where this is exactly the same and this is exactly the same at all times. So I pick whichever I want and just say add constraints, and I added them. Now, whoa, 
it turned red. Why am I getting those red lines right there? Now, you can always find out about your problems that you have with constraints by clicking on this little thing right up here. You see this yellow guy? Click on him and it says, the horizontal position is ambiguous for stack view. Well, I've got multiple stack views, so which one's it talking about? This is kind of a bummer. This is really just an overview of the errors. Usually we don't look here. The place we look is in the document outline. Okay? The document outline here, which I have shown, okay, I can hide it and show it. This is the place where, for example, we had to wire up to the refresh control. This is the place we go when it's hard to click on something because we can just click on a view here. This is also the place we go to deal with all auto layout problems. And the magic place to look is this upper corner right here. You see that red right there? This red is saying that there is a, either a lack of constraints or conflicting constraints. In other words, there are constraint problems that are so bad that your app is not going to work when you run. So we can click on this red thing and it will show us all the details of all the constraint problems. So now when we mouse over this, it still says need constraints for exposition, but we can find out which stack view it's talking about. And of course, it's talking about that one. This other stack view over here, it has an exposition. It's tied to the left edge. But this one is not tied to anything. Its top and bottom are tied, but it could be sliding horizontally any which way. So that's not tied. So we don't know where its X position is supposed to be. All right, so we need to fix that. So how are we going to fix that? Well, uh, probably the best way to do that is to hook it up to the edge of this stack view. Because if it t we tie this edge right here um, to this stack view, then it'll, its horizontal position will be set because it'll be tied to this guy's horizontal position. So how do we hook this guy up to here? Well, we could, of course, control drag. Right? But I'm going to use this opportunity to show you a different way to hook it up, which is I selected it, and I'm going down to this other menu down here, this one that says Add New Constraints, and I'm clicking on it. And we've actually seen this one briefly, I think. But here you can do things like make things to be a fixed width, or you can set the distance from your nearest neighbor. That's what these are. These are the distance to the nearest neighbor. Now, these little red I-beams are all grayed out right here, or, or transparency doubt. So right now, this guy is not hooked up to his nearest neighbor at all. But we clearly want to hook him up to his nearest neighbor on the right. That's this one. So I'm going to click this I-beam. It turns it on. And now he's clamped to his nearest neighbor on the right. And he's eight pixels away because that's what the dashed blue lines put. But we don't want that. We want 10 pixels away. So we're going to pick 10. All right. So we have 10 pixels away clamped to the nearest neighbor. So let's add that constraint as well. OK, our red went away, but now we have yellow. What does yellow mean in auto layout? Yellow means, OK, your constraints are OK. And when you run, it's probably going to work. But what you're looking at in your storyboard is not what your constraints are saying. OK, your constraints are not equal to what you see here. And you can see right here. For example, it's expecting the X position of this stack view that's highlighted right here to be at 385, but it's actually at 387. And if we zoom way in, in fact, with uh, option, there's option zooming here, you can see there's a dashed yellow line. Can, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, this dashed yellow line, that's where the constraint system thinks this stack view should be. The solid yellow line is where it actually is. And even the I-beam between the two has a little minus two right there saying, yeah, I got this I-beam here, but it seems like it should be two, <laughs> two points over to the left. All right? So how do we fix this? When we have these yellow problems, how do we get things to be put in the right place or something? And the answer is we're going to go over to our document outline. OK, by the way, we can get here with the same way we got to the red by clicking in this upper corner with the yellow. And we're going to click on this triangle because that's going to, this triangle lets you resolve the problem. So I click on it, and I actually have some choices how to resolve that problem. One is I can update the frames. That means move the views to match the constraints, which is definitely what I want in this case, right? Because I do want it to be 10 pixels apart there, not eight. But I could also do other things like updating the constraints. And that would go and change that, con that constraint to be I-beam 8 instead of 10. Even though I type 10, this would clamp it back to 8 so that it would match what's going on here. 
or you can do the dreaded reset to suggested constraints, which probably also would at least do that, probably do some other things we don't want. It, in other words, it's going to try and do what the blue line said. Reset to suggested constraints, we rarely use. Okay, it's only good for when you're like dragging something right into the middle or right out to the edges, those kind of things. Um, it's not super good at guessing what you want uh, in other scenarios. Now, this update frames, I can apply it just to this view right here that's having the problem, or I can apply it to all the views in my entire view controller. And whether you have this switched or not, it's, it's about 50-50 when we switch this, is whether you have other views that you're in the middle of working on, that you haven't quite fully specified their constraints, then you probably don't want to apply to all because it's going to try and move them and you haven't finished specifying them. Uh, but in this case, this is the only view that has any misplaced views, you see? So I can go ahead and say all or not. It's not going to make any difference because this is the only one that's going to move. So I'm going to leave it in all and I'm going to say fix. And you're going to see that it moved it. It's moved it two pixels over here. If we zoom in again here, we'll see now that this is 10, just like this is 10. Okay? Uh, it moved it. And it also says no auto layout issues over here. If we go back here, there's nothing in the corner. So all is well. Okay, we're in good shape right there. Now there's one other problem with this. Look how narrow these buttons are compared to these buttons. Okay, we want these buttons to be exactly the same width as all of these buttons. Now, since it's not in the same stack view, it's not getting the fill equally, and so it's not getting that. So how can I make these buttons inside this stack view right here be exactly the same width as the buttons over here? Well, I'm going to just control control drag, okay, actually I'm going to control drag from the entire stack view, see I'm dragging from the stack view, to any button over here and just say that I want it to be the same width as any button over here. So we'll just pick this one and here's all the things we can choose and I'm going to go down here to the bottom and pick equal widths, okay, because I want those buttons to be the same width and I'm going to add that constraint and it applies the constraint and you can even see this constraint right there, again I'll zoom in, you can see the constraint right here, this equals, and this equals is saying those two things are equal. All right. So we're almost there. We've got this four buttons that we added looking like they're in the stack view by putting our own constraints on there. The only thing that's left is we're not using the whole space. Okay, we're not connected to the whole space. Now here we can do exactly what we did before. I'm just going to um, select this stack view right here, not this one, but just this one, and I'm going to control drag up to here, and I'm going to set its vertical spacing, puts this I beam in here to the top. Now when I double click on it, well also by the way, you know that we can click on these and inspect them, remember that, so it's showing that this I beam connects the stack view's top to the display's bottom and it sets the to be equal with an offset of 57. That's what this constant is. It's an offset of 57. So that's why we're getting this 57 height bar. And we don't want that. We want to change that to be standard value. Actually, we don't even want standard value. We probably want 10 because we probably want this distance to be the same as the distance between all of our buttons. Yeah, I'm not sure which one we want, but I think that one's probably pretty good. Okay, so that's good. Now, notice as soon as I constrained the top of this stack view to go up here, it automatically dragged this stack view's top up there. That's because we have a constraint that hooks the tops of these together, right? If I click on here and look in the size inspector, you can see that I've got a line top to this top and bottom to this other stack view. You see that? So that's good. What about this edge? Same thing here. We can just take this stack view and hook its edge, this leading space to container margin, just like we did before. And here we get this. Obviously, we can inspect it over here. We can also double click on it to inspect it, which we saw before. And here I pick standard value. There's no standard value available, so I'm just going to do zero, and it's going to zoom that thing over. That's it. So we've done everything we need to do now for this, horiz this uh, height compact situation. And so this is a very important thing to remember to do. When you're done, click done varying down here. Because a lot of times you'll do this and you're like, all right, it's working. And then you'll go on to work on some other size class and you'll forgot to have clicked this off and now you'll be editing only in the uh, height compact. So we're gonna hit done varying, gets rid of our blue, and we, so we know we're in good shape. Now what happens if I go back to portrait? What's this gonna look like in portrait? Anyone volunteer, yeah? No? 
So all of this work that we did here has had no effect whatsoever on portrait because portrait is height regular. And all that work we did here, every single bit we did since we clicked the, into the blue bar, only happens in height compact. So when we click back to portrait, it looks just like it used to, unaffected by all that work we did. Make sense? Everyone understand why that happened? Okay, so now we need to, in this case, the height regular case, we need to put those buttons in along the top here. So I'm going to do this pretty quickly so you can kind of uh, see a review of it. Actually, before I do that review, let's let this soak in a little bit because I want to show you the document outline. So I'm going over to the document out outline. I'm just going to make it wider. And why do you want to make this wider? Well, the document outline shows not only all your views, but it also shows all of your constraints. You see all these constraints down here? And you notice that some of them are like grayed out here. Why are they grayed out? Because they apply to a different size class than is being shown here. We are looking at height regular. These grayed out constraints are only over here in height compact. So when we go to height compact, all of them apply because we haven't done any uh, constraints that are in height regular only yet. So all of these apply in that circumstance. Now, looking at your constraints right here is a really good uh, kind of tool for finding tiny little problems with your UI. And that's when you have magic numbers. You see these magic numbers along here? 8, 8, 20, 10, and 10. By the way, we never want to look at the magic numbers for things that are grayed out like this 347. We're not even going to look at that because it doesn't apply here. Okay? We only want to look at the ones that are dark blue here. So we don't like to see these magic numbers here unless we intend for that magic number to be there. So 8, 8, 20, we never typed those in. Why are they there? We don't want them there. 10 and 10, however, we do want those. We wanted those. Those are a magic number we want in our UI. That's our spacing in between that we decided we want. So how do we get rid of these magic numbers like 8, 8, 20? Well, you're going to click on them to select it. This is just like you had clicked on it in here, because the document outline, remember, you click there. It's just like you're clicking in, in here, except for sometimes it's even easier to click on the document outline. Uh, we could also click on the thing that it's attached to, like the display. Okay, so this is the displays top equals top layout guide plus eight. And go to the size inspector here and see it. And we'll see the magic numbers here also. Not just in the document outline, but we're seeing them here um, in our size inspector. So anytime we see these magic numbers, we want to inspect them either here or by clicking on them and edit them. So in the size inspector, we've always gone in to check to make sure the things are good, but we can also change them if they're not good. And so here I'm clicking on it and editing it. And this constant, I don't want it to be 8, so let's see what my choices are. I don't have standard value. Use canvas value means use what's currently showing in the storyboard. We rarely want that. It's almost never want that. That would mean that we had to have dragged it right into position. Maybe we use the blue lines. It might be right, but almost never do we want the canvas value. Instead, we're going to do what we uh, do here to say what we want. So maybe. Um, this one, actually, I'm going to do this one down here first. Let's look at this one. So this top layout guide here, this one, we can use a standard value, okay, to do it to the top lay layout guide. And look, I did standard value, and it got rid of the plus 8. It's still eight, pixel, 8 points over there, because that is the standard value, but it stopped showing it as that. And the same thing up here, when we go up to this one, and we look, uh, there's no standard value here, so what do we put? Zero. And when we have zero, that actually fixed a bug because it moved this display right up to the edge right there. And you can see that got rid of that one. Same thing here. We can go to this one. Let's do this one by inspecting it. Here's the constant right here, 20. We don't want that. We'll go here and say, oh, standard value. Puts the standard value, and the 20 is gone. That also fixed a bug because the thing was not all the way down at the bottom. So you see how we fixed bugs by going and chasing down all of our magic numbers in this view. Okay, in the document outline. So you almost always want to be chasing those things down. The only problem can happen here when you're chasing them is if you have a magic number like 8 or 20 that you actually intend to be 8 or 20 because then you're like, oh, is that a magic one or not? Because there's no way to unfortunately put like a variable in there or something. But these 10s, we know those are right. Okay. All right. So 
just a little sidetrack there to show you how to use that. Let's go back to our height regular and make this look like what we want. So let's start by pasting back in this, these things. Oh, actually, before we do that, and this is a common mistake you'll make too. What mistake did I make right there? I wanted to start doing height regular and I didn't hit vary for traits. So I wasn't actually editing uh, height regular. I was editing any, any. Okay, so don't miss that. So and I'm gonna vary for traits in height and it's gonna use this height, whatever I'm looking at, height regular. And it's gonna show me all the devices that have height regular, which is all the iPads, you know, split view, masters, all the iPhones, they're all height regular. So it's just showing me, and I can actually do this editing in any one of those, okay? Because they're all height regular. All right, so now let's paste this in. Now, when I pasted this in, by the way, an interesting thing happened. If I go to my attributes inspector and go all the way down to the bottom, look right here, okay? I've, I've selected this um, stack view right here, and you see that it says installed not, but in height regular, it's installed. That's saying this stack view only is installed in the view hierarchy when we're height regular. If I select on this one, notice it's installed everywhere, right? It doesn't say not installed and then height regular, it says installed everywhere. So you can always tell which views, and you can of course click these on and off, and you can even add a plus here to add variation to remove them. I find it easier just to enter this varying mode and then drag these things in. Uh, but anyway, so here we go. Let's get this thing down here. Uh, again, we want the both edges to be lined up, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, remember, we do that by selecting them both and then going over here to align. This time, it's the leading and trailing edges that we want to be the same. And I add those constraints. Again, as soon as I add those constraints, now I have a problem where the vertical position of this stack view is not defined. Okay, need constraints for the Y position because I've only constrained it horizontally right there. So let's go ahead and constrain it for a vertical by pinning it to this. I'm gonna use this other one over here this time. And I'm gonna show you something interesting here. So here I'm gonna to pin to its bottom nearest neighbor and I'm gonna use 10, which is my magic number that I want. And I'm gonna pick something in here. Because remember last time we did this, when I put this in here, it turned from red to yellow right, because things weren't in the right position because I had added constraints and it didn't move them. Well, if you go down here and say update frames either to the items of the new constraints involved in the new constraints, which would be the nearest neighbor and us, or you can do it all the frames in your container. If you turn this on, then when you add this constraint, it will automatically move them. And then you won't get the yellow. You won't have to go over and click, you know, update frames and all that. So watch this. When I add this constraint, it moved them. See that? No yellow, right? Here I am in my document outline, nothing on in the upper corner like there was when we did the, the other one. Now we still have one other thing to do here. It's not obvious that we need to do this, but uh, the height of these just happens to be the same height as all of these. But that's just a happy circumstance. And the other time it was obvious that they weren't. So I need to do the same thing here where I'm gonna control drag from this stack view, and then again, I could do either an individual button or one of these sub stack views right here, and I'm gonna set them to be equal heights. Otherwise, it's just so that no matter what mathematical symbol I put in those buttons up there, then it's never gonna squinch down uh, and be smaller or, or grow up and be bigger than the other ones. Okay, so I'm gonna say equal height right there. See the two equals that got generated there, okay? So same thing as before, we've done a good job of adding this on and making it seem like this uh, part of the stack view. So now this time we're gonna attach this stack view up to here, okay? So I'm just gonna control drag up to here, set the vertical spacing, and I'm gonna put the edge of this big stack view right here over to the edge. And same thing as always, we wanna double click here, standard if we can, we can't, we'll do zero. Same thing with this one over here, double click. Here we want our magic number of 10. So now we've done all that we need to do for our uh, height regular, so we can done varying right here. And did this affect height compact? No, no effect on height compact. And if we run, okay, we've got width is compact, but height is regular, so we're getting five high 
and four across. In regular height, we go five high. And when we switch over here, we get width compact, height compact. Now we've gone to four high and five across. All right. So hopefully that showed you pretty much all the things you need to know about auto layout. Not just how we vary major UI differences between the size classes, but also how you're going to use the document outline over here to look at all of your constraints and fix the dark blue ones that have magic number that you didn't intend. Uh, you can also use this to click on your constraints and look at them. It's highlighting them here and inspect them over here. And we're still often using the size inspector right here to look at all of our constraints. Okay. And the hugging priority we briefly showed, that's just if you have two things that are trying to share space and you want one to hug and one to use the other space, you can do the hugging. We also didn't really talk about the content compression resistance, but that's the opposite thing. That's where it's trying to collapse things down. One of them wants to keep its height and the other one is happy to be collapsed down. Okay, so that's just kind of the opposite of hugging, that's compressing. So you can set that as well. Okay, any questions about all that auto layout business? Okay, so that is it for the demo. And just a little bit about what's coming up. So tomorrow, uh, your assignment five is due by midnight. Uh, no section Friday this week. Next week, the lectures are gonna be about animation. Okay, a really important part, obviously, of uh, an iPhone device or an iOS device is animating things on screen. So we're gonna talk about that next week. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.